In this video, we're going to talk about exporting your Cubase project as an audio file, and that way you can share it with the world. You can burn it on a CD, or save it as an MP3, or any other file format so that you can make it audible by anybody who has a music player. Now, in a previous tutorial, I talked about the differences between 16-bit, 24-bit, and 32-bit audio. And before we started recording our very first audio files, we went to the Project pull-down menu and went to Project Setup, or you can just type Shift S to reveal the project setup window. And I set the bit resolution of this project to 32 bit floating point. And I mentioned that 32 bit floating point has the advantage of an extraordinarily wide dynamic range. And the other advantage is that when you record in 32 bit, you cannot clip the audio pathway or the audio engine of Cubase itself. The only place you can drive the project into clipping is at the master fader, and this is what most people set improperly. So I'm going to hit the OK button to close the project setup window, and then I'm going to type the F3 key on my Mac keyboard to get to the stereo output. Now the default setting of the stereo output fader is at its zero position, so I'm going to hold down the command button and double click on that fader to get it back to its zero position and then I'm going to play the project back and I'm going to see if at any time this project during playback clips. Let's wind back to the very beginning and take a listen. Ah, see? Right off the bat the clip indicator came on. And if you look at the channel level, you can see that it shows you that the master fader has had its 0 dB headroom exceeded by 1.3 dB. Now when you exceed the limit of the master fader, you have clipped the audio output. And if you don't do something about it, then the audio file that you export of this project will also be clipped. In other words, it will be distorted, and you don't want to distort your audio mix downs. You want to have the master fader up high enough that the clip indicator never comes on, but not too low that you end up with a very quiet audio mix down. So what you want to do is play through the entire project and monitor the channel level output of the master fader and make sure that it never clips. And that clipping indicator on the master fader can be reset simply by clicking on it, and since you have that clip indicator visible in the transport panel as well, that gives you another place that you can monitor the audio output of your Cubase project. So I'm going to click on that clip indicator, and you'll notice that it goes away in the mixer as well, and since the positive value of that channel was exceeded by 1.3 dB, I'm going to bring the master fader down about 1.4 dB. So here's 1.38 dB. Now let's listen back to the project and see if it clips. You walk oh, it clipped again. So I better bring this down again. I'm going to double click and change that to about minus 1.5 dB and play the project back again. You walk and did it again. So you can see why you have to be a little bit delicate with setting this master fader output. Let's go to minus 1.7. So you want to play through the entire project and constantly monitor that master fader level and make sure that the channel level itself never exceeds 0.0, .0 dB and when it does the clip indicator will come on indicating that you better turn down the master fader before you perform an audio export. But as you remember, we actually did some volume automation to the master fader. So if I were to enable the read automation on the master fader, it's going to exceed 0 dB pretty quickly. Let's see if that's the case. 
So since we have some automation on that track, now might be a good time to adjust the master output level by adjusting its input gain. So instead of changing the level of the fader or by editing the automation data, we could come up here and enter the same value that we were adjusting the fader to about, uh, let's see, minus 1.7 db and that way the project won't clip during the audio export however that input gain will change the level of any insert effects that you have on the master fader and we're going to talk about those insert slots next <laughs> 